And this presentation is entitled, The Greek Jesus, as seen here, is not the Hebrew Yeshua. Let's reason together. We all have inherited false teachings from our forefathers, as it states in Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19. But it is our responsibility, our individual responsibility, to compare the doctrines we have inherited with Scripture and make changes if and when necessary. This presentation is a hard saying and may be hard to swallow by some people. Therefore, it is not intended to judge, condemn, or hurt anyone, but to provoke people to study and to do their own research. Don't believe anything I present. Check it out to see if what is being taught agrees with Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Some time ago I learned that the Christian Messiah with the name of Jesus is not the Hebrew Yeshua. These are two completely different entities. The name Jesus is a man-made invention, a Greek Messiah with a sun disk created by men. But Yeshua is the son of the Most High that was born to a couple from the tribe of Judah. The name Yeshua means Yahweh, the Father, saves. In Matthew 121, the Messiah himself said, I have come in my Father's name. In John 5.43 he said, I have come in my Father's name and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you would receive. This other one was called Jesus, and that name has no meaning whatsoever, neither in Hebrew nor in English. It is a lie. Jesus was not the Messiah's name when he walked the earth. That name was invented hundreds of years later. The Father has a Hebrew name, which consists of four letters, yod he vav he in Hebrew, called the Tetragrammaton, according to Exodus 3.15. Some people pronounce it as Yahweh, others as Yehovah, and still others as Yahuwah. Basically, he has a Hebrew name. Why would his son have a Greek name? The Greek name Jesus is a mask for Tammuz. The New Encyclopedia Britannica writes in the article about Tammuz the following. In the Mesopotamian religion, he is a god of fertility, embodying the powers for new life in nature in the spring. That's in volume 11, page 532. Alexander Hislop says that Tammuz was intimately associated with the Babylonian mystery religions began by the worship of Nimrod, Semiramis, and her illegitimate son, Horus. The original form of the Babylonian letter T was Tau, identical to the crosses used today in this world's Christianity. This was the initial of Tammuz. How does his name evolve? How did all this come about? There are several opinions. It is not a translation, but some claim that it is a transliteration. Here is where and when the real deception started according to this one website. It states, 
Constantine's intention at Nicaea was to create an entirely new god for his empire who would unite all religious factions under one deity. Presbyters, bishops, were asked to debate and decide who their new god would be. Delegates argued among themselves, expressing personal motives for inclusion of particular writings that promoted the finer traits of their own special deity. Throughout the meeting, howling factions were immersed in heated debates and the names of 53 gods were tabled for discussion. As yet, no god had been selected by the council and so they balloted in order to determine that matter. For one year and five months, the balloting lasted. This is in God's Book of Esquire, Professor S. L. McGuire's translation, Salisbury, 1922, chapter so and so, paragraph 3641. At the end of that time, Constantine returned to the gathering to discover that the bishops had not agreed on a new deity, but had balloted down to a short list of five prospects, Caesar, Krishna, Mitra, Horus, and Zeus. Constantine was the ruling spirit of Nicaea, and he ultimately decided upon a new god for them. To involve British factions, he ruled that the name of the great Druid god, Jesus, be joined with the Eastern Savior God, Krishna, Krishna is Sanskrit for Christ, and thus Jesus, Krishna, would be the official name of the new Roman God. A vote was taken and it was with a majority show of hands, 161 votes to 157, that both divinities became one God. Following long-standing heathen custom, Constantine used the official gathering and the Roman apotheosis decree to legally deify two deities as one, and did so by democratic consent. A new god was proclaimed and officially ratified by Constantine. That purely political act of deification effectively and legally placed Jesus and Krishna among the Roman gods as one individual composite. That abstraction lent earthly existence to amalgamated doctrines for the empire's new religion and because there was no letter J in alphabets until around the 9th century the name subsequently evolved into Jesus Christ. And I personally believe, according to my study, that the letter J did not come until like the 15th century. But this is on this website and I was uh, just saying whatever the website said. This is the website here, sabbathcovenant.com. Constantine introduced the false messiah, the Greek Christ, which is being worshipped today by most people. We are not arguing semantics here, because this false Greek messiah called Jesus that is being proclaimed by Christianity stands for many non-biblical pagan teachings. Now here is a partial list of the Roman Catholic Church as an example. We have Sunday sacredness, indulgences, veneration of Mary, court of inquisition, couple foot washing, purgatory, celibacy of the priest, which comes from the Catholic Church. And here are the various dates when all these things were uh, started. We have the monasteries, nuns and monks, the cross, church steeples, holy water, the Latin mass, 
Corpus Christi Day, it's a dispensation. Confession, coronation of the Pope with the triple crown, the infallibility of the Pope, the worship of images, the canonization of the deceased, to kiss the feet of the Pope, When you go to the Lutheran denominations, we find some additional non-biblical teachings like we are living under grace and not under law, the Trinity Doctrine, the three and a half year ministry of Yeshua, the Friday crucifixion and Sunday resurrection, Christmas and Easter celebration, the biblical day begins at sunset, say some, most claim that the biblical month starts with a new moon. When man dies, the soul goes to hell or to heaven. The monthly communion service instead of the yearly Passover. Calling on the Greek Jesus instead of the Hebrew Yeshua. Calling the Creator Lord, L-O-R-D, which actually means Baal or Baal instead of Yahweh, Yahuwah or Jehovah. Waiting for a pre-tribulation rapture. Baby baptism instead of full immersion of adults. Sunday sacredness. The replacement theology. Then we could mention some other questionable or false teachings in each of the churches or denominations. Some teach about a coming Sunday law, an investigative judgment that started in 1844, the lunar Sabbath, some teach once saved, always saved, a second probation, a temple being built during the 1,000 year reign of the Messiah with animal sacrifices. The tithing system of the Levitical system in the Christian churches. Sunday is a new Sabbath for the Christians. The death of Yeshua did away with the Torah. The Torah is only for Jews, they say. Yeshua was born on December 25. Yeshua was resurrected on Easter Sunday. It's okay to celebrate Halloween disguised as a harvest festival. Eating pork and lobster is okay for a Christian. Yeshua only gave two commandments for Gentiles to follow. There is a spiritual Israel meaning the Christian Church and the physical Israel, the Jews. The Church is married to Yeshua. The Jews are married to the Father and Moses gave us two Torahs, the written Torah and the oral Torah. Sacrifice is better than obedience. Praying without a head covering is sin. Saying the name of yod is sin. Drinking alcohol is sin. Seven-year land rests is an outdated religious practice. And eating eggs, salt and butter are dangerous habits. It is a sin to be sick. All these things cannot be proven from the Bible. Let's be real. But a base solely on men's ideas. We could go on and on. That is confusion, or as the Bible calls it, Babylon. We can safely say that Christianity is not the religion that the Hebrew Messiah Yeshua started, nor supports. It is a hybrid religion, a mixture of some of the teachings of Yeshua 
but not the same religion that he nor the apostles taught. The great departures from the original first century church blossomed in the second century with the Emperor Constantine and grew in number and seriousness with each passing generation. These are the facts which are not intended to offend, to condemn, or to judge individuals, but to be a wake-up call. It is for our own good to find out what happened during the past 2,000 years and make a U-turn to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and to the written instructions he gave through Moses. According to 1 Timothy 2, 4, Yahweh wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Yet he doesn't force everyone, or actually anyone, to accept Yeshua as their Savior. Man has a free will. He must choose his destiny. Yahweh invites people to believe him and to accept his invitation. Yet there are plenty of folks who are not interested and who don't believe any of this stuff because of their ignorance and carelessness. They have been deceived and brainwashed as we all had been led astray. Yeshua, falsely called Jesus, is not Southern Baptist, American Baptist, Fundamental Baptist, Independent Baptist, Missionary Baptist, Bible Baptist, Methodist, African Methodist, AME, United Methodist, United Brethren, Anglican, Catholic Apostolic, Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Church of England, Christian, Episcopal, Lutheran, Wesleyan, Amish, Presbyterian, Mennonite, Church of God, Calvary Chapel, Moravian, Bayard, Nazarene, Foursquare, Mormon, RLDS, Star of Truth, Branch, Davidian, Unitarian, Hutterite, Pentecostal, Assembly of God, House of Prayer, Jesus Movement, Church of Christ, Evangelical Free, Disciples of Christ, Christian Church, Seventh-day Adventists, Congregation of Yah, Global Church of God, Harmony of Life, Christian Science, Jehovah's Witness, United Christian Church, Church of God in Christ, Worldwide Church of God. Yeshua HaMashiach is not a Christian. Neither did he start Christianity. He is a Jew, a Hebrew from the tribe of Judah, and you can read it in John 4.22. There are over 300 messianic prophecies, and only one person in the history of Israel has fulfilled all of these. Only Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth has fulfilled all prophecies that were written about him. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Shalom.